Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Good to have you here. A lot of you ask me dating questions and I like that because I have dated a long time on and off. I had a matchmaking business in New York City. Oh gosh. 15 plus years ago. And for several years, we set people up and help people meet each other. And I learned a lot about dating. I wrote a couple of books about it. And then I went through a divorce as a matchmaker. So as you can imagine, um, people had fun with that, but I really did learn a lot about myself and what was okay and relationships. And I later got married a second time at the age of 50. So I'm always trying to be as open as possible about what I've learned in case it helps any of you. I have my friend here that has a whole bunch of questions from you. I've not looked at those questions yet, so they're gonna be rapid fire. I have not seen them yet. She pulled them off of um, Instagram and Facebook. So we're gonna get started and um, we'll see where we go. Okay, so you're not comfortable walking up to somebody and being like, hey, do you wanna go have coffee? I totally get that. And I have, I have a certain shyness about me if it's around somebody that I've you know, been attracted to. You know, I think that body language is everything, right? But being open, like presenting yourself as being open and, and being open to other things. Like sometimes we go down the line and think, oh, this is what I want. I want to date this person. So I have to let this person know specifically I want to date them. And that's not really what you need to do. What you need to know is just let this person know you are open to just having a conversation and seeing where that goes. So that can be with body language, that can be with a smile, that can be with a wave, that can be if you're doing it online, which you know could very well be the case, is just striking up a conversation versus asking somebody out. Like, I don't think you have to do that anymore. I think that you can present yourself to somebody in another way just to get to know them. Hmm. Separated for two and a half years, but still not divorced. So these are always tricky ones because then I say, well, what is his definition of separated for two and a half years? And what is his partner's definition of separated for two and a half years? I went through my divorce and it took about a year and a half, but we were separated and then the divorce you know, was in place, which it does take some time. If they're having a very difficult separation and difficult divorce or difficult mediation or attorneys are involved, that's one thing. If his idea of separation is they've separated, but not even started to go through the next step, then I would have real questions about that because then they're not clear about what they wanna do next. So I would figure out what the definition of separated is. Have they filed divorce papers? Are they really both on the same page? Well, if you are now engaged and you're gonna be part of that family, you become part of that family. I think though you have to set those boundaries for yourself as well, because you're right, you should never be asking, per personally, you shouldn't be asking permission to do any of those kind of things, but you're obviously doing that because something is making you feel uncomfortable. That's just, it's not okay. That's not what you're supposed to be doing, especially if you're gonna be marrying into that family. So I think you have a very clear conversation with your fiance so you don't feel like you're asking mother may I every time you wanna have a conversation with his mom, his dad, his friend, his sister, because I think you'll really grow resentful of that. Gosh, how do you know that they love you more than you love them? That's That concerns me just a little bit. I think that it's a Coco Chanel line, right? That you always wanna be with somebody that loves you more than, than you love them. But the truth of the matter is, is you should be in that partnership because you love each other. I don't know how you are measuring that because there's different reasons and ways that we love people. You know, everybody is an individual. And I think you have to decide if you're with that person for the right reasons. Are you with them because they give you that much attention and, and love you so much that it makes you feel good? Um, and are you doing that in return? Because that has to be reciprocated because otherwise you're just gonna have a one-sided relationship and that's gonna get old to somebody eventually. Uh, narcissism is very difficult and somebody that has exhibited those behaviors and and those behaviors on you can be very scarring and uh, troubling and triggering and you know you name it you've probably dealt with it if that was a narcissistic relationship I think trust you know, everybody we give trust in all different ways to all different people right and I think you have to start small you know you don't go into a relationship and just open yourself up freely because we've come with experiences and I think that you have to trust little by little and I think you have have to also give yourself a little bit of a break and not feel like you have to completely commit to somebody until you're ready to do that. Give yourself a little bit of a break and a little bit of love and open up little by little and I think eventually you'll get there. 
Oh, don't say that. First of all, everyone is not in a relationship. Second of all, your timeline and everyone else's timeline is not the same. You know what? Love will find you if you're being open to it. If you're letting people know that you are open to meeting new people. I, I never went out there. When I met Ira, I wasn't out there looking for a relationship. I was learning who I was. I was learning to fall back in love with myself and to like myself a little bit. And I think that people find that attractive about somebody else and they have that confidence from the inside. And they're not just looking around trying to be with somebody and try to you know fit into whatever formula the rest of the world is in. So give yourself a little bit of a break in terms of trying to be like everybody else and enjoy where you are right now and I have a feeling if you keep your eyes open a bit and you stay open to it and let people know that you are interested in meeting somebody not desperate to meet somebody but interested to meet somebody it'll come your way Ooh, unsolicited advice and tell you, well, first of all, I don't like anybody telling anybody what to do, except if I have to tell Ira what to do. But otherwise, I don't want anyone to tell anybody what to do. I think that, you know, if you're, if you're, I don't know if this is somebody you're dating or if these are people that you're uh, working with, if it's somebody you work with, those boundaries are pretty clear. And you can say to that person, like, you know, th this is not okay. I'm not, you know, I'm not comfortable with this. This doesn't make me feel right. You know, if you need something from me, let me know. If this is somebody you're dating though, and they're telling you what to do, I think you need to find a way out of that kind of relationship or at least bring it to their attention and let them know how you perceive what they're saying because that's not any way to be a partner. You know, I sometimes I think that we're we're looking for different things in relationships, right? And I think sometimes maybe we're looking for guidance. Um, maybe we're looking for a, a mentor in a relationship. Maybe we're looking for somebody that kind of takes the lead. You know, 19 can be young for looking for somebody who's a little bit older. I've dated older men most of my life, but usually, you know, when I started around 30, 35 years old, I I personally think it was because I, I grew up kind of early. You know, I, I lost my mom at an early age. I, I uh, took the lead in the family in a lot of different ways. So I think for me, that was why I think 19 though, you're still in a place where you really want to enjoy yourself and have fun and, and be young. So I wouldn't look at growing up too fast because you're going to get there eventually. You know, I, I think anytime you're in a relationship, I think it's important to take a little bit of a beat between that for a couple of reasons. I think that first you want to reconnect with yourself a little bit because we all sort of change in a relationship. Um, two, and I think you want to know what you're looking for this time around because you don't want to go out there. And, and I did this, and this is why I say it a lot. I, I made the same mistake and I went after the same type of person because I didn't give myself breaks in between things. So what is it like three months, four months, you know, to just kind of get to know yourself. You can get back out there and see who's there, but I wouldn't get jump into a serious relationship again. Uh, definitely not for about six months. Okay. We changed to the uh, kitchen area because we're going to have a little pre-drinks before dinner. So I figured I would keep our company in here. Oh, that's a good question. Let's see. Yes, it's okay to keep separate passwords, but is it because you've said, hey, I want to know your password in case, you know, there's ever an emergency and they say, no, I'm really not comfortable with that. That's a little bit of a concern to me. Like I know Iris password. I think he knows mine. I'm not hiding it. Yeah, I would wonder. And also how far are you in the relationship? If you're like dating and it's just not very long, you know, and plus do you, do you feel like you need that password to look something up that you're concerned about? That's the big question. Honey, you're just taking everything out? These are three tequilas, so this... let's see what type she likes. Oh my God. <laughs> I really... Gosh, if you're struggling with that, uh, I would say nay right now. At least give yourself a little bit of time because what are the reasons behind that person leaving? Did they leave to go be with somebody else? Did they leave because they were trying to see what was going on outside of the relationship? I did that. I, I took back, I, I went after an ex again. And, um, you know, the person that wasn't that into me the first time wasn't that into me a second time. And I wasted a lot of time. The one in the first month, you don't know if he's the one in the first month. You might know if you might not know if he's the one in the fifth month or the 10th month. You better give that four seasons. That's what I think anyway. I think you need to give somebody time to get to know them, let them evolve, get out of the honeymoon stage a little bit, you know, see what they're like in family situations, see what they're like on the holidays, see what they're like when money is tight, uh, see what they're like when everyone's in a rush and you've got to cook dinner and try to get to bed. Four seasons is what you give that, not one month. Yes, it is. You can have conversations with several guys at the same time. I don't know that I'd be dating all these several guys at the same time, but you can have conversations until you know what you want. 
Oh, I like this. I used to write these bios and I haven't done it in a long time. You know, I, I always think like, when I, this is what I was doing and I've not been online in a long time, but these frilly words and everyone's using the same words and they're copying each other. So everybody looks perfect. Like that, that doesn't work. Like honest to goodness, if you were talking to a friend and you had to describe yourself, what would it be like? I like having fun. I like getting outside and go for a walk. You know, some things I think are silly. I don't like this. I don't like that. And, and be authentic, be who you are. Don't try to interpret how somebody else is gonna perceive you. Because I think when you do that, you send the wrong message, first of all. And second of all, you're not gonna attract the right kind of people. Are you eating candy? I just wanna do the ice. We no, I so the Do the ice. ice. <laughs> Honey, why are you eating chocolate? Oh gosh, this question comes up. It doesn't matter how many years I talk about dating advice, but sleeping with someone on the first date, you know, Everybody's individual, I know that. And probably 20 years ago, I would have said, oh my gosh, don't ever sleep with somebody on the first date. If you really think you might be interested in that person long-term, I don't know if that's what you want to do first thing. I think you want to get to know somebody. That doesn't mean you can't do it. Doesn't mean that if you sleep with someone on the first date, it's never going to work out. But I think it's nice to get to know somebody first so you know what each person is looking for. That's what I think. I don't think there's any hard, fast rules to it, but I don't think I'd jump into bed with somebody and I especially wouldn't do it after a breakup. 25 to 38, so that's a 13 year difference. I usually say like when you're 30 years old, if those if that age difference, that age gap doesn't bother me too much. And I don't know that it bothers me, but I, I do think you're going into really different worlds. Like 25, you're just getting out there. I don't know if you went to school and you're just starting your career, but you're just getting out into the world. And I feel like 38, you've been out there for a while. And I just always suggest not to push yourself so fast into another age group that you're not enjoying where you are. That would be my only question. Do you feel like you're missing out? Do you feel like you're, you're doing things in a closer to 40 age group than you would normally be wanting to do? Oh, a crush at work, come on. I, that is a messy place. Unless you're leaving, I don't think I'd have a crush at work. It just leads to kind of a mess. Oh no, okay. You're gonna hate this one. Okay, dating a man who has a woman. We love each other, but he's afraid of starting all over again with me. He has a woman? He, I, no, no, go, go, go.